Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, glad to have you here. Uh, we are now doing the ship for the crew. If you haven't seen the little videos I've done prior to this, uh, you should check those out. You see all these little minifigures that I made, sort of like a mercenary group. And this is a ship I built that they go with. Um, this is a set bash, as I call it, uh, between three different Lego sets. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually missing a part right here. Kind of bothers me, but I'll, I'll find it eventually. Uh, the sets that I used were, two of them were Ninjago sets, and one of them was a Star Wars set. And, um, I will show you the, the instruction manuals for those in a second, but just wanted to point out that <clears throat> I bought all three of these sets for the intent purpose to do something like this, to set, set bash them together. I didn't really care about the sets themselves. I just wanted to take parts of them and combine them into something. Uh, I'm going to go over those sets right now. We're going to start with the Star Wars one, which is set 75284, the Knights of Ren transport ship. This is from 2020, had 595 parts. It retailed for $70. The minifigures in here are... The Knights of Rend Cardo, which is about $15, only appears in this set. Kurok, who's also $15 and only appears in the set. And then the White Robed Ray, who is $2. Not a lot of value there. She comes in four sets. Uh, then, here are the figures. The Knights of Ren, nicely printed. You know, very detailed bodies, and uh, yeah, you can... The thing about the Knights of Ren, each of them only come in a single set. And so they kind of put those behind a, a paywall. And then Ray, you know, just Ray. Uh, kind of a unique hair piece there. It's about all that's going for her. I mean, it's, it is a nice robe, but eh, whatever. They made a bunch of her. And then the first of the Ninjago... Set is the 71704 Kai Fighter, not to be uh, mistaken with the TIE Fighter. Uh, this is from 2020. It was 513 parts, and it retailed for $40. Um, I forgot to say, the Knights of Ren ship, uh, you can get that on Bricklink for uh, $20 with just the ship, and then sealed 50 and up. Um, it didn't really hold its value very much. Uh, for the the Kai Fighter here, also did not hold its value very well. You can get it for um, everything except the box for twenty bucks, but uh, sealed box is thirty five on Bricklink. You can starts about that price. The minifigures they have here, I'll show you. You get a lot of samurai swords in this set. Uh, we have Kai. He is a dollar. He comes in three sets. Lloyd, also a dollar. Comes in two sets. Uh, this Nindroid Warrior with the shoulder pads, two dollars. This is the only set he comes in. And this Nindroid Warrior, who is labeled as dual-sided head on Bricklink, is also two dollars and comes in two sets. These are literally the exact same figure. There's nothing different except they added the shoulder pads here. And you actually get two with this set, so technically they're not unique. You get two of them. Uh, yeah, those don't have any value, basically, at all. Uh, and then the third set is the 71736 Boulder Blaster. Uh, this one came out the year after, in 2021, had 449 parts and retailed for $40. Um, you can get this used for about $30. It's mostly complete. Uh, or sealed for $35. So if you want to get it, just pay an extra 5 bucks to get it sealed. Um, this comes with uh, Cole, who is $1. Only comes in this set. Guy named Izor with a bone axe. He is one dollar. 
threes and four sets. You get another Lloyd, who's also a dollar. Uh, this is the other set this Lloyd comes in. And then the 10th anniversary of Ninjago Pearl Gold Body Kai, which uh, $7 comes in two sets. It's actually decent value. I've got a couple of the other ones. Overall, not a lot of, you know, value here. Everything is uh, below MSRP now in the secondary market. Um, I mean, it makes sense with the Ninjago stuff, but the Star Wars, it really kind of dropped. You can get a sealed one for 50 bucks when it came out originally at 70 Like, not a good showing for that. Um, anyways, as you can see... If you looked at the, the instruction manuals there, I have this, which is a conglomeration of the three, mostly very large chunks. Um, the, the main body of this is mostly still the same structure as the Kylo Ren transport, not Kylo Ren, Knights of Ren transport ship. Uh, I have moved a few things around. I will point out a couple of them here so we have this little single turret single barrel turret here with a hatch I moved that to the back right here so you can get there we've got the turret goes up and down and uh, this part right here is a hatch you lift that up you can uh, stick a figure in there then we have the other hatch which is down here has two barrels on the turret that one I moved up to the very front here. You've got the moving turret. You have the hatch still. Um, you can see right here, uh, all this was on a kind of like a opening. It's a trap door. I have that still. You can see here you've got the, uh, the one by one round studs. Same with that, except uh, I tiled this over and flipped it around and it lifts forward. I think. I should know it might have might have lifted back. I'm not sure. It's been a, quite some time. Um, these engines here, I have them here flipped upside down. Well, not really upside down, but like instead of downwards, they're upwards. It is the exact same build. I did not change these very much. If at all. Pretty sure I didn't change them at all. Um, <laughs> these right here, I actually moved those up to the front. These panels are basically the same. I Essentially, I just took everything, kind of flipped it around, moved it forward and back. And uh, the grill here on the bottom, I'll show you later, but here it is tipped downwards. I flipped it over. And canted it up. Um, then once I'll, sh I'll flip this over and show you, but we've got these like tubes here, and those I also flipped around. Um, they're a little twisted. It was a little hard to get these to go in there because I had to expand this a little bit. I'll show you here. So these uh, these still move upward. Like that. And then I'll show you here. You can see that gap right there. I took this section and moved it forward two studs. And that's why there's a there's a gap going through there. And it didn't bother filling it. But I had to uh, move those forward in order to get these to fit in the location I needed them to. And cover that grill, which is... You know, it just sits in there with those. And instead of having it down, I have it up. Kind of fill that front. And you can see there's, there's not a lot in there. And then we've got pieces from the Ninjago stuff. These right here, I got one on each side. That is... You can see it right here next to the center here. It's that chunk that 
kind of a panel and I just turned it, stuck it on the side. Um, I ended up with a lot of big chunks of these sets still, except maybe the, uh, the transport because I used most of that. But the, the Ninjago ones, I have big chunks of them still. Like over here, the whole front assembly of the, the, the boulder blaster. I didn't have a use for that, but it goes in there. You have a some Technic parts in there, it secures it. And that panel I was just talking about goes right here. It's one on each side. I took those off, flipped them over, slapped them on, put a piece from the Kai Fighter onto the front, and that makes the front end there. And then these wings back here are basically just the ones from here. I only changed the ends a little bit, took some pieces off. And, and uh, that's about it from this, except some pieces to fill in parts, like this back here that comes off of here. You can see it right there in the back. Um, the Kai Blaster... Not Kai Blaster, I'm mixing these together. The Kai Fighter, you can see that I used a lot of this for like the accents here in the back, all on the sides and everything. Um, these back parts of these wings, it was on a mechanism. You can uh, move that up and down and the wings would, you know, kind of slide forward and slide back. Um, got rid of that mechanism and attached them to here. Sort of just along the side of this part right here. And it's basically, I mean, you can see, I just flipped those around, slapped it on, make something completely new out of these. And um, we got these here, a little green there, red there, kind of like airplanes. They have that on the Boulder Blaster. Um, what else can I talk about here? Uh, ba 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 little things over here just extra details and stuff there's uh there's no really not really any moving parts here except for these um the hatches and and that um as far as like my head cannon goes this is actually quite a large ship because i've got a crew of like what six seven people in it so it's it's a lot bigger than you would expect just kind of shrunk down due to uh size constraints, stuff like that. Um, you've got the landing gear. Here's the bottom of it. Added that in there just for splash of color, I think, or just to fill it in. I don't know. I was just sort of just slapping things together and saw what worked and it came out pretty good. I mean, you can see here, these are the, uh, uh, I think those are the attachments that Oh no, they already have those. So I literally just took the wing off, slapped it on there, secured it in place up here. I don't, I'm not sure where I got those pieces from, but same with that. Just took the wing, slapped it on, you know, kept, kept the pieces it was connected to. Most of the landing gear is all in the same plot place. And you know, you don't have to be like a super genius. You just got to have some imagination and you can put them together. Um, but back to the head cannon. This is the ship they go around in. I, I like to think this is like the access to the cargo hold. You know, like full-size cargo hold. And then you've got your hatches, you know. They can dock on it with small shuttles or whatever. And, and uh, if, if I had more parts, more time, I could have made this as like a front landing bit. Not landing bay. Uh, like a front hatch or a, uh, a main ramp. Uh, I don't really have like a set area for the cockpit. I like to think it's more of, you got some like viewports and stuff. Um, a bunch of details just sort of like tie the red into the back with the, you know, the red in the front to the red in the back because there's a lot of black here. Um, and like the little bit up in the front really makes it pop. Um, of course you've got like the, the flames to make it go faster because why not? And I, I do really like these engines. 
Um, I mean, the whole whole reason why I bought these sets is because I liked parts of them. Uh, I built all three of them individually, uh, the way they were supposed to be made, and, and they were all right, you know? Um, Ninjago's got some pretty good builds. I think the whole sort of weird plane thing was a... It, it, it is a gimmick. It's not just that I thought it is. It's a gimmick. It's just one of their... Every season of their show, they do something new, and it just happened to be planes for for that year or two. Um, this thing's really dusty. It's been sitting on a shelf for a couple of years. Um, I'm happy with it. Honestly, I like it better than the uh, Knights of Ren transport ship. That thing was just kind of weird. You see it for, I don't know, how many seconds in the movie. Uh, the characters were not well used. They were just boogeymen, basically. And I had no emotional connection to the ship whatsoever because they, they don't show you anything in the movie. But, I mean, if I keep going on that, it's going to be a couple hours before I stop. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy with how this came together. A lot of the times the, the, the set bashes that I do have like a lot of gaps in them. And thankfully this one's got a bunch of panels to hide all the, the open spots. And, um, it is a little busy, but it, I feel like it's got a pretty decent flow to it. Um, added a little... They had a side turret, and I added it onto there, too. I think I moved it a little higher up. Um, yeah, you know, I like it. And uh, hopefully this will... Uh, like, I already did another set bash video a little while ago. Uh, but hopefully this will show people that, you know, you don't have to design something from the ground up. You can just take what you like from other sets and put them together in a way that is new and exciting like inspiration is inspiration um definitely don't go off and take people's designs and try to play them off as your own but if you see a technique that excites you like figure out how it's made and 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 you know roll with it you know the more you build the better you get and uh the the longer we can keep our fandom i guess going our our obsession with these little plastic bricks um i know i certainly won't be stopping for a, a long time if ever probably never um and i hope none of you do either so yeah that's pretty much all i want to do i still have to do um, some, like, honorary members of the crew. Uh, I'll probably be doing those in the next few videos. Uh, so, anyways, if you made it this far, you know, like, subscribe, do the YouTube thing, comment if you want, and, uh, hope you stay tuned for the next content, and I will see everybody later. Toodles.